What if the boundary between divine judgment and the fate of mankind was marked not by lines drawn on maps, but by celestial beings bound at the very heart of ancient civilization? This question lies at the core of one of the most mysterious prophecies in the Book of Revelation, the story of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River. The Euphrates, renowned in both history and myth, is more than just a river. It is a symbol of life, civilization, and ultimate boundaries. Here, at this vital artery of the ancient world, Revelation places its four enigmatic guardians. These celestial beings are not mere spectators, but pivotal actors in the grand drama of the end times, each bound by divine decree until their moment to act arrives. This setting at the Euphrates is not arbitrary. The river itself serves as a powerful symbol, representing both a literal and a metaphysical boundary. Throughout human history, it has been a witness to the rise and fall of empires, and now, according to prophecy, it is to be the stage for a profound and transformative divine intervention. The introduction of these angels and their mysterious bondage invites us to delve into the depths of prophetic meaning. It challenges us to explore the interplay between divine purpose and the tumultuous course of human history, setting the stage for a journey through time, scripture, and spiritual understanding. As we explore the roles and symbolism of the four angels, we will uncover layers of meaning within the broader context of biblical prophecy, unraveling their specific missions and the implications of their actions at the banks of the Euphrates. This journey through prophecy is not just about exploring the foretold events, but also about understanding the deeper messages encoded within the divine narrative and how they resonate with the spiritual journey of each believer. John the Apostle, exiled on the island of Patmos, experiences profound visions delivered through divine revelation. Among these is the vivid depiction of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River a scene steeped in apocalyptic significance. This vision, as described in Revelation 9, serves as a chilling prelude to one of the most dramatic events in John's series of prophecies, the release of these angels to execute a divinely ordained massacre. The Euphrates River, historically a cradle of civilization, now becomes a symbol of impending judgment. The imagery of the angels, chained and restrained at this significant site, underscores the tension between divine control and impending chaos. Each angel, a formidable presence, is imbued with the power to affect human destiny profoundly. John describes the angels as being kept ready for the very hour, day, month, and year, predetermined by divine will to unleash their wrath. This precision in timing not only emphasizes the meticulous nature of divine planning, but also injects a sense of inevitability into the narrative. The moment these angels are released, a third of mankind is destined to perish, marking a pivotal moment in the eschatological timeline. The prophetic vision also intertwines the physical and spiritual realms, presenting the Euphrates not just as a geographic landmark, but as a spiritual boundary separating the holy from the profane, the controlled from the chaotic. This duality invites us to reflect on the nature of boundaries, those imposed by geography and those erected by moral and spiritual standards. As the narrative unfolds, the symbolism of the chains and the angel's role becomes clearer. The chains represent not only restraint, but also the latent potential for divine wrath, waiting to be unleashed at the ordained moment. This portrayal challenges us to consider the implications of divine timing and the role of celestial agents as executors of divine justice. This segment of the vision sets the stage for deeper exploration into the roles of these angels, the nature of their mission, and the broader theological implications of their actions. The Euphrates River has not only been a witness to the rise and fall of civilizations, but has also served as a critical boundary in both physical and spiritual realms throughout history. The choice of this river as the holding ground for the four angels in Revelation is layered with historical and prophetic significance, intertwining the past with eschatological visions. The Euphrates is one of the longest and most historically significant rivers in Western Asia, often associated with the cradle of civilization in Mesopotamia. It has demarcated empires and has been at the center of many biblical narratives, symbolizing fertility, life, and also division. This dual symbolism is essential as it reflects the river's role not only in nurturing civilizations, but also in defining them through boundaries that both connect and divide. In biblical tradition, angels are often depicted as messengers or executors of God's will, intervening in human affairs at critical junctures. 
The depiction of angels as bound at the Euphrates suggests a guardianship role over these divine decrees, particularly those involving judgment and purification. This guardianship aligns with the broader thematic elements of protection, warning, and execution of justice seen in angelic activities throughout the scriptures. The identity and origin of these specific angels are not detailed in Revelation, leading to much speculation. One theory might suggest that these angels were assigned this role as a form of divine judgment, not against them, but as a part of their duties to enact consequences upon humanity at the appropriate time. Their binding at the Euphrates could symbolize a pause or restraint on divine judgment, a sort of divine mercy until the appointed time. These guardians of history and prophecy symbolize a deeper theological concept of divine watchfulness and intervention. Their presence at the Euphrates, a site of both historical connectivity and division, emphasizes the ongoing interaction between the divine and the human, the spiritual and the temporal. It also raises questions about the nature of divine justice and the mechanisms through which it is administered, reflecting on how divine timing aligns with human history. As we delve into the reasons behind their binding and the significance of the Euphrates as their place of restraint, we explore not only the nature of their mission but also the broader implications of their eventual release. This exploration invites reflection on how divine plans are interwoven with human history and how eschatological promises are fulfilled at the intersection of time, place, and divine will. The imagery of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River raises profound theological questions about the nature of their restraint. What purpose do these chains serve? Why are celestial beings, who traditionally act as agents of divine will, held back in this instance? Understanding the symbolism of the chains and their significance in this prophecy allows for a deeper insight into the mechanics of divine judgment and the balance between mercy and wrath. In biblical literature, chains often represent a limitation of power, a temporary suspension of action until a specific moment of release. These chains, however, do not reflect punishment for the angels themselves. Instead, they serve as instruments of divine restraint, holding back forces that, when released, will unleash devastation. This suspension indicates that while God's judgment is inevitable, there is an appointed time for everything, a lesson in divine timing and precision. The binding of the angels suggests that there are moments in history when God holds back his full wrath, allowing humanity space for repentance, reflection, and possibly redemption. This symbolic withholding of judgment reflects God's mercy, a theme that resonates throughout the Bible. Though the angels are prepared to act, they are bound until the appointed time, reinforcing the idea that God's justice is exact and timed perfectly to coincide with his larger plan for the world. Though angels are often depicted as messengers or protectors, they are also agents of divine judgment. In the case of the four angels at the Euphrates, their restraint indicates that they are not merely messengers, but beings empowered with the authority to carry out destructive judgment. The vision in Revelation speaks to the magnitude of their power, the ability to decimate a third of humanity. This destruction is not arbitrary, but part of a divinely orchestrated event that will unfold when God decides it is time. The chains then serve as a reminder that the release of these angels will coincide with the fulfillment of God's judgment. It is not a question of if, but when. This idea of restraint and release has deep theological implications, reminding believers that God's wrath, though delayed, is certain. The chains also symbolize divine control over chaotic forces. Throughout Scripture, God demonstrates his power by containing forces of chaos, whether in the form of nature, evil, or even death itself. In the case of these angels, God holds them back, ensuring that their destructive power is not unleashed prematurely. This control reinforces God's sovereignty over all creation, even over the most powerful of his celestial agents. By holding back these angels, God shows that he alone has the authority to decide when and how his judgment will be executed. The chains are not only a physical restraint, but a symbol of divine order, preventing chaos until the precise moment when it will serve his ultimate purpose. The release of the four angels chained at the Euphrates marks a pivotal moment in the unfolding events of Revelation. As their chains are broken, these powerful celestial beings are unleashed to carry out a devastating act of divine judgment. 
The timing of their release is crucial, as Revelation chapter 9 verse 15 describes how they had been prepared for the hour, the day, the month and the year to fulfill their purpose, bringing destruction upon a third of mankind. This catastrophic event serves as a sobering reminder that divine judgment, though delayed, is inevitable. The precision of their release speaks to the meticulous nature of God's plan, emphasizing that everything unfolds according to divine timing. The moment these angels are set free, the world will be thrust into a period of unparalleled chaos and suffering. The four angels, once restrained, are not passive participants in the end times. They are active executors of God's wrath. Their release signals the unleashing of one of the most devastating judgments in the book of Revelation. According to the prophecy, these angels command a massive army of 200 million horsemen, an overwhelming force tasked with bringing widespread destruction upon the earth. The sheer scale of this army, paired with the angels' supernatural authority, reflects the magnitude of the judgment they will carry out. As they move forward, death and destruction follow. Revelation chapter 9 verse 18 describes the horrors that unfold. Fire, smoke and sulfur unleashed upon the world, killing a third of humanity. This unimaginable devastation is a direct consequence of their release, demonstrating the power that has been contained up until this moment. The wrath of God, now in motion, sweeps across the earth, leaving destruction in its wake. The death of a third of humanity is not a random act of violence, but a calculated step in the unfolding of God's eschatological plan. This event highlights the severity of divine judgment and serves as a stark warning to those who have refused to repent. Despite previous warnings and opportunities for repentance, this moment signifies that time has run out for many. The angels who had been bound are now instruments of finality, executing a portion of the divine plan that moves the world closer to the ultimate conclusion of history. The release of these angels raises important theological questions about the nature of divine justice and mercy. Up until this point, humanity had been given ample opportunity to repent, but this moment marks the beginning of the final judgments. The destruction they bring upon the earth is a reminder that while God is patient, His judgment is also unavoidable. The angels, once bound in restraint, now act as agents of God's final reckoning, the imagery surrounding the release of the angels is both vivid and terrifying. The fire, smoke, and sulfur that follow in their wake echo earlier biblical accounts of divine judgment, such as the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. This apocalyptic imagery reinforces the gravity of the situation. These are not ordinary events, but the direct intervention of God in human history. The 200 million strong army they command adds to the sense of overwhelming force. This is no ordinary military invasion, but a supernatural force of destruction, bringing to mind images of unstoppable chaos. The scale of destruction mirrors the magnitude of humanity's rebellion against God as the final judgments are unleashed on a global scale. Despite the devastating consequences of the angel's release, Revelation tells us that many still refuse to repent. This refusal to turn from wickedness, even in the face of such overwhelming destruction, illustrates the depth of human rebellion against God. It shows that even in the most severe judgments, the human heart can remain hardened, unwilling to seek forgiveness or change. This defiance in the face of divine wrath further emphasizes the necessity of judgment. While some may see the angels' actions as harsh, they are a reflection of the unrepentant nature of humanity. The release of the angels and the destruction they bring serves as a final call to those who would still turn to God, though many continue to resist. The release of the four angels marks a crucial turning point in the eschatological timeline. From this moment on, the pace of events accelerates, pushing the world closer to the final resolution of all things. This moment is not only about destruction, but about the fulfillment of God's plan for creation. The angels' release is a sign that the time for mercy is coming to an end and the era of final judgment is at hand. The consequences of their release also force humanity to confront the reality of divine justice. For those who have refused to repent, there will be no escape from the wrath of God. The angels, once bound, are now agents of finality, and their actions bring an irreversible shift in the course of history. The apocalyptic vision of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River 
is a dramatic and unique prophecy found in the canonical Book of Revelation. However, themes of celestial beings, especially angels, bound or restrained for divine purposes are not limited to the biblical canon. In many apocryphal and non-canonical texts, the roles of angels as instruments of judgment, as well as beings who experience restraint until a predetermined time, appear in various forms. These texts, though not part of the Bible, provide fascinating insights that can enrich our understanding of the bound angels in Revelation. Perhaps the most notable non-canonical text that deals with angels in a similar light is the Book of Enoch, particularly its narrative of the fallen angels, or watchers. In this ancient text, which was highly influential in early Jewish thought, a group of angels descended to earth and through their rebellion against God, taught humanity forbidden knowledge. These angels are eventually bound in chains, awaiting divine judgment for their disobedience. The imagery of the Watcher's binding bears a strong resemblance to the chained angels in Revelation. In both accounts, these powerful celestial beings are temporarily restrained, their release or judgment scheduled for an appointed time. Enoch describes how these angels are held in the abyss or under the earth until the final judgment. This concept of celestial beings being held in reserve, bound by divine command until they are needed to fulfill a specific role in the eschatological timeline, resonates with the description of the four angels in Revelation chapter 9. Another apocryphal work, the Apocalypse of Peter, offers an additional layer to the understanding of angels and divine judgment. In this text, angels are seen acting as both witnesses and executors of punishment. The Apocalypse of Peter focuses on the punishments of the wicked in the afterlife, where angels play a significant role in carrying out God's justice. While the specific imagery of bound angels at a river is absent, the role of angels as overseers of destruction and judgment parallels the task given to the four angels in Revelation. This text emphasizes the idea of angels acting as divine agents of justice, highlighting their active participation in the end times and the ultimate punishment of humanity. The connection between angels, divine judgment, and their instrumental roles in carrying out God's will during the final days is a common theme that spans both canonical and non-canonical texts. The Sibylline Oracles, a collection of apocalyptic prophecies attributed to the Sibyls of the ancient Greco-Roman world, also presents similar themes of divine intervention through angelic beings. These oracles, though outside traditional biblical literature, blend Jewish, Christian, and pagan ideas of the end times. In some sections of the Sibylline Oracles, Angels are described as gathering for the final judgment, their role being to carry out divine decrees at appointed times. While the oracles do not mention the four angels of the Euphrates specifically, the emphasis on angelic beings playing a crucial role in the final judgment is clear. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates has been a subject of deep theological reflection and speculation throughout history. Scholars, theologians, and religious thinkers have sought to interpret this enigmatic passage from multiple perspectives, exploring its symbolic meaning, historical context, and its implications for understanding the nature of divine judgment. Several key interpretations and theories have emerged over time, each shedding light on the significance of the angels and their role in the unfolding of the end times. One of the primary questions surrounding the four angels is whether their binding and release should be understood literally or symbolically. Some scholars, particularly within more conservative theological traditions, argue that the prophecy is literal, meaning that there are indeed four specific angels physically bound at the Euphrates River, awaiting their release at the appointed time. According to this view, the prophecy will be fulfilled exactly as described, with the angels leading a vast army to bring destruction upon the world. However, many scholars lean toward a symbolic interpretation, seeing the angels as representing larger forces of judgment and destruction. In this view, the angels are symbolic of empires, nations, or ideologies that, once released, will wreak havoc on the world. The Euphrates, a historically significant boundary between civilizations, becomes a metaphor for the restraint of chaos until the proper time, when these destructive forces are unleashed as part of God's final judgment. Another prominent theory interprets the four angels as symbols of war. Historically, the Euphrates River has often served as a boundary between powerful empires, 
such as the Roman and Parthian empires. Some scholars suggest that the release of the angels symbolizes the breaking of this boundary and the unleashing of war on a global scale. This interpretation ties the prophecy to geopolitical events, with the four angels representing military powers or forces that will be instrumental in bringing about the cataclysmic wars of the end times. This theory is supported by the description of the 200 million strong army that follows the angels, suggesting a vast military force rather than a spiritual or supernatural army. The fire, smoke and sulfur they unleash can be interpreted as symbolic representations of the destruction brought by war, possibly foreshadowing modern warfare or future conflicts. Some interpreters link the four angels to the concept of the four corners of the earth, a symbolic representation of the totality of creation. In biblical tradition, the number four often represents universality or completeness, as seen in references to the four winds, the four corners of the earth, and the four living creatures before God's throne. According to this interpretation, the four angels may symbolize the forces of divine judgment that will impact the entirety of the world, affecting all corners of the earth when they are released. This view emphasizes the cosmic scale of the judgment that these angels bring, suggesting that their release is not just a localized event, but a global one that will affect all of humanity. The Euphrates, in this interpretation, serves as a symbolic barrier between the earthly realm and the impending divine judgment that will encompass the entire world. The notion of restraint plays a significant role in the prophecy of the four angels. Many scholars have focused on the theological implications of the angels being bound by chains, which signify that their destructive power is held back by divine command until the proper time. This theme of restraint echoes other biblical stories, such as the binding of Satan in Revelation chapter 20, or the restraint of the forces of chaos in Genesis. The chains are a reminder of God's sovereignty and control over even the most powerful and dangerous forces in the universe. The release of the angels then signifies the moment when God allows these forces to act, carrying out his will at the appointed time. Theologically, this speaks to the balance between God's mercy in holding back judgment and his justice in eventually unleashing it. As we continue our journey, we'll delve even deeper into the interpretations and the unfolding of events that these prophetic visions foretell. Some theologians have also drawn parallels between the restraint of the angels and the patience of God in delaying judgment, giving humanity time to repent. The eventual release of the angels can be seen as the point at which God's patience reaches its end, and the final judgment begins in earnest. In modern eschatological discussions, the prophecy of the four angels has been linked to various theories about the end times, including interpretations that focus on contemporary geopolitical events. Some theorists view the Euphrates as a literal boundary in the Middle East and interpret the prophecy as a foretelling of future conflicts in the region that will escalate into global war. This interpretation ties the release of the angels to modern concerns about war, terrorism, and political instability in the Middle East. Another interpretation focuses on the angels as essential players in God's sovereign plan for the end times. In this view, the angels' release is part of the larger divine strategy to bring history to its ultimate conclusion. The angels are not rogue agents of chaos, but obedient servants of God, waiting to execute his final judgment when the time is right. Their role highlights the careful orchestration of events by divine decree, emphasizing that everything, even destruction, serves a greater purpose in God's plan. This interpretation underscores the theme of divine justice, reminding readers that while the judgments of Revelation are terrifying, they are also necessary steps toward the ultimate restoration and renewal of creation. The release of the four angels is a crucial part of this process, signaling the beginning of the end and the culmination of God's redemptive plan. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates is a powerful and multi-layered vision that invites a range of interpretations. Whether viewed through a literal, symbolic, historical or theological lens, the release of these angels marks a significant moment in the eschatological narrative. It serves as a reminder of God's control over the forces of chaos, the inevitability of divine judgment, and the ultimate fulfillment of his plan for creation. The story of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River stands as one of the most dramatic and mysterious elements in the apocalyptic narrative of Revelation. 
These angels, restrained by divine command, are poised to unleash a cataclysmic judgment upon the earth, serving as agents of God's wrath in the final stages of the end times. Their release, precisely timed and meticulously orchestrated, underscores the themes of divine sovereignty, judgment, and the delicate balance between restraint and release in God's overarching plan for humanity. Throughout the narrative, the emphasis on divine timing is crucial. The four angels have been prepared for the hour, the day, the month, and the year, marking the precise moment when they will be set free. This meticulous attention to timing highlights a core message of revelation. Everything unfolds according to God's predetermined plan. The release of the angels is not a random act of destruction, but a carefully scheduled event that serves a greater purpose in the divine narrative. This idea of timing resonates with other biblical themes of waiting, preparation, and divine intervention. Just as the angels are restrained until the appointed time, so too is humanity given a period of mercy, a window in which to repent before the final judgment comes to pass. The release of the angels serves as a turning point, signaling that the time for judgment has come and that the world is moving rapidly toward its ultimate conclusion. Divine Judgment and Human Rebellion The prophecy of the four angels also speaks to the inevitability of divine judgment. Despite previous warnings and opportunities for repentance, the release of the angels marks the point at which humanity's rebellion against God reaches its breaking point. The destruction they bring, a third of mankind perishing, illustrates the severity of divine justice and the consequences of continued disobedience. Yet even in the face of such overwhelming judgment, Revelation tells us that many still refuse to repent. This aspect of the prophecy serves as a sobering reminder of the hardness of the human heart and the deep-rooted nature of sin. The angel's release, therefore, not only brings about physical destruction, but also reveals the spiritual state of humanity at the end of days. It forces us to confront the reality that despite God's patience and mercy, there are those who will persist in their defiance even in the face of imminent judgment. The chains that bind the four angels at the Euphrates serve as a powerful symbol of God's control over the forces of chaos and destruction. While the angels are formidable beings, capable of bringing about widespread devastation, they are ultimately under God's authority. Their restraint by chains emphasizes that even the most destructive forces in the universe are subject to God's will and are released only when he commands. This theme of control reflects a broader theological message within Revelation. God remains sovereign over all things, even in the midst of the apocalyptic events that unfold. The angel's release, though terrifying, is a reminder that God's plan is always in motion and that nothing occurs outside of his divine oversight. The chaos they unleash is part of a larger process of judgment and renewal, leading to the eventual restoration of creation. The release of the four angels marks a turning point, not just for a specific region, but for the entire world. The impact of their actions, resulting in the death of a third of humanity, reflects the global nature of the judgment. This is not a localized event, but one that affects all corners of the earth, emphasizing the universal scope of the end times. The role of the Euphrates River, historically significant as a boundary between empires, now takes on a cosmic dimension. The release of the angels signifies the breaking of boundaries, both physical and spiritual, allowing divine judgment to sweep across the globe. The angels' actions echo earlier biblical themes of boundaries being crossed, such as the flood in Genesis, but on a much larger, more devastating scale. This global destruction serves as a stark reminder of the totality of divine judgment, affecting all of humanity, regardless of geography or status. Ultimately, the story of the four angels bound at the Euphrates leaves us with a sense of awe at the mystery of God's plan. While we are given glimpses of how divine judgment will unfold, the full scope of God's purposes remains beyond human understanding. The angels, restrained for a time and then released, act according to a plan that is far greater than any one individual or event. Their release is a reminder that, though we may not fully comprehend it, God's plan is moving toward its ultimate conclusion, and all things are working together for his final purpose. The identity of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River 
is one of the most intriguing aspects of this prophecy. Their release in Revelation 9 triggers catastrophic consequences, but little is said directly about who these angels are or why they were bound. Biblical and theological scholars have explored various possibilities to understand their nature, origins, and roles in the eschatological plan. Are they fallen angels or divine agents? One common interpretation is that these angels are fallen beings, rebellious entities who disobeyed God and were subsequently bound until the end times. This concept has its roots in ancient Jewish traditions, such as those found in the Book of Enoch, where certain angels called the Watchers descended to earth, defied divine orders, and taught forbidden knowledge to humanity. As punishment, they were bound in chains under the earth, awaiting judgment. This interpretation would align with the pattern seen in Revelation, where these four angels, once freed, bring death and destruction to a third of humanity. Their role seems punitive and destructive, characteristics often attributed to fallen angels. However, this raises a theological question. Would God delegate such a significant task of judgment to rebellious beings? If these angels are indeed fallen, their release signals that even evil forces are under God's control, used as instruments of divine judgment when necessary. Alternatively, these angels could be divine agents, obedient servants of God, who have been specifically bound for a particular mission. In this view, their restraint is not a punishment, but a deliberate act of divine providence, ensuring that their devastating task will only be carried out when the time is right. This interpretation places them among the ranks of heavenly beings who, though powerful and potentially destructive, act according to God's command and plan. To understand these angels, it is helpful to explore the broader biblical context of angelic hierarchies. Throughout the Bible, angels are depicted in various roles, messengers, warriors, protectors, and agents of divine justice. The book of Daniel, for instance, refers to archangels such as Michael and Gabriel, who serve as God's primary messengers and defenders of the faithful. The four angels of the Euphrates, however, appear to belong to a different category. They are not described as messengers or protectors, but as beings capable of unleashing immense destruction. Their power over a third of humanity places them among the most fearsome of all angelic beings, potentially indicating a high rank within the angelic order. Unlike the archangels who defend and guide, these four seem designed specifically for the role of divine judgment. Some scholars speculate that these angels may belong to the same class as the destroying angels mentioned elsewhere in Scripture. In the story of the Passover in Exodus, for example, an angel of death carries out God's judgment by striking down the firstborn of Egypt. Similarly, in 2 Samuel 24, an angel of the Lord is sent to bring pestilence upon Israel as part of divine punishment. In both cases, the angels act as agents of God's wrath, restrained until the moment of judgment arrives. Another possibility is that the four angels are not literal beings, but symbolic representations of larger cosmic or political forces. In the apocalyptic literature of the Bible, angelic figures are often used to personify greater movements in history or spiritual realms. For example, in Daniel's vision of the four winds of heaven, the winds represent the divine forces behind the rise and fall of earthly empires. From this perspective, the four angels of the Euphrates might symbolize specific world powers, ideologies, or geopolitical movements that will be unleashed at the end of days. The fact that they are bound could suggest that these forces are currently restrained by God, prevented from acting until the appointed time. Once released, these symbolic angels could represent the outbreak of war, chaos, or global catastrophe, in line with the apocalyptic narrative of Revelation. This interpretation would also explain the connection between the angels and the massive army of 200 million horsemen they command. If the angels represent geopolitical powers or movements, the army could symbolize the vast, destructive capabilities of these forces, unleashed upon the world during the end times. The binding of angels is a recurring theme in Jewish apocalyptic literature, especially in texts like One Enoch. In these stories, the Watchers are a group of angels who descend to earth, defy God and corrupt humanity. As punishment, they are bound in chains beneath the earth, awaiting the final judgment. This narrative provides a striking parallel to the four angels in Revelation, suggesting that they too could be former servants of God who have been imprisoned for their disobedience. While the Bible does not explicitly connect the four angels to the Watchers, the thematic similarities invite comparison. 
In both cases, powerful angelic beings are restrained by divine command, waiting for the moment when their release will serve a purpose in God's larger plan. Whether these angels are fallen or obedient, their release signals a turning point in the divine narrative, where cosmic forces long held in check are finally unleashed upon the world. The identity and nature of the four angels bound at the Euphrates remain shrouded in mystery. Whether they are fallen angels, divine agents, or symbolic representations of larger forces, their role in the eschatological timeline is undeniable. They are instruments of divine judgment, restrained until the precise moment when their destructive power will be unleashed on a disobedient world. This ambiguity allows for rich theological reflection, inviting readers to explore the deeper meaning of God's justice, the nature of cosmic forces, and the ultimate resolution of human history in the apocalyptic vision of Revelation. The Euphrates River holds immense significance both in ancient history and biblical prophecy. As one of the most important rivers in the ancient Near East, it served as a lifeline for early civilizations like Sumer, Babylon, and Assyria. However, in the context of Revelation and other biblical texts, the Euphrates transcends its geographical role, becoming a powerful symbol of divine boundaries, judgment, and the meeting point between human history and divine intervention. In the ancient world, the Euphrates was central to the development of some of humanity's earliest and greatest empires. Its waters nurtured fertile land that allowed the flourishing of agriculture, cities, and trade routes. The region known as Mesopotamia, nestled between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, is often referred to as the Cradle of Civilization, as it was home to the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians, peoples who left an indelible mark on human history. The Euphrates was not only a physical boundary, but also a political and military one. For empires like Babylon, the river served as a strategic defense, demarcating borders and protecting cities from invaders. Its position as a boundary between powerful civilizations gave the river an aura of inviolability, often seen as a line that, once crossed, signaled impending conflict and change. This historical understanding of the Euphrates informs its prophetic significance in Revelation. Just as it once marked the borders of ancient empires, the river now serves as the spiritual boundary between the present world order and the unleashing of divine judgment. The Bible frequently references the Euphrates as a significant geographic and spiritual landmark. In Genesis 2.14, the Euphrates is mentioned as one of the four rivers flowing out of the Garden of Eden, connecting it to the creation narrative and the beginning of humanity. This connection situates the Euphrates as a river of life and origin, making its later role in Revelation as a site of judgment all the more striking. In Genesis 15.18, God promises the land between the Nile and the Euphrates to Abraham and his descendants. This covenant further elevates the Euphrates as a marker of divine promise and inheritance, but it also establishes the river as a boundary between God's people and the nations surrounding them. Throughout biblical history, the river plays a key role in both the deliverance and exile of the Israelites. When the Babylonians captured Jerusalem and took the Israelites into captivity, they crossed the Euphrates, marking the loss of God's favor and the beginning of a long exile. By the time of Revelation, the Euphrates takes on an apocalyptic significance. It is no longer just a river, but the boundary between divine patience and divine judgment. When the angels bound at the Euphrates are released, the river becomes the site where judgment crosses from the spiritual into the physical realm. In Revelation, the Euphrates represents the boundary between restraint and the unleashing of destructive forces. The four angels bound at the river are held back until the appointed time, at which point they are released to bring devastation upon the earth. The river, in this sense, serves as a spiritual barrier between the current world order and the apocalyptic events that will unfold in the end times. The symbolic use of the Euphrates as a boundary reflects broader biblical themes of rivers as markers of transition. In the Old Testament, rivers often represent moments of passage or transformation. The Israelites' crossing of the Red Sea, for example, marks the transition from slavery to freedom. Similarly, the Jordan River represents the entry into the Promised Land after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. These crossings are moments of divine intervention, 
where God's people move from one stage of their journey to another. The Euphrates in Revelation mirrors these earlier themes, but amplifies them on a global scale. It is no longer just a boundary for a particular people, but a line that once crossed affects the entire world. The angels held at the Euphrates represent forces of chaos and destruction that have been restrained, but their release signals the final passage from an era of relative peace to one of divine wrath and judgment. Boundaries, both physical and spiritual, are a recurring motif in prophetic literature. They often symbolize the limits of divine patience or the point at which human actions lead to inevitable consequences. The crossing of these boundaries, therefore, marks a moment of irrevocable change. In the case of the Euphrates, the river functions as both a literal and symbolic boundary. Its release in Revelation represents the breaking of the final barrier between divine judgment and humanity. It is at this point that God's restraint ends and the full force of His wrath is unleashed. This theme of boundaries and crossing them can be seen throughout the Bible's apocalyptic visions. In Daniel 7, for example, the four winds of heaven are restrained, but once released, they stir up chaos and bring about the rise of beastly empires. Similarly, in Zechariah 6, four chariots are held back until the appointed time when they are sent out to patrol the earth. In both cases, divine forces are held back until God decrees their release, mirroring the role of the Euphrates in Revelation. The Euphrates also appears in non-biblical apocalyptic literature, where it often serves as a boundary between the human world and the spiritual forces of chaos. In the Apocalypse of Abraham, a Jewish apocalyptic text, the river marks the separation between the righteous and the wicked in the final judgment. The crossing of the river in this text symbolizes the transition from one era to another, where divine justice is carried out in full. Similarly, in later Christian apocryphal works like the Sibylline Oracles, the Euphrates is depicted as a boundary between the present age and the coming kingdom of God. These texts, though outside the biblical canon, reflect the same themes found in Revelation. The river as a boundary that once crossed leads to final judgment. Euphrates River, both in its historical and spiritual context, serves as one of the most important boundaries in biblical and apocalyptic literature. From its role in the creation narrative to its place in God's covenant with Abraham, the river has always represented a dividing line between the divine and the human between promise and exile. In Revelation, it takes on an even more profound significance as the boundary between divine restraint and divine judgment. The release of the angels at the Euphrates is a signal that the final crossing has begun, and with it comes the unleashing of God's final plan for the world. The release of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River brings about one of the most catastrophic events in the entire biblical narrative an event that results in the death of a third of humanity. This judgment is not only a moment of divine wrath, but also a significant escalation in the series of apocalyptic events foretold in Revelation. The role of these angels in executing such widespread destruction raises profound theological questions about the nature of divine justice, the scope of their mission, and the meaning behind the numbers and symbols associated with their actions. The angel's release marks a dramatic turning point in the apocalyptic timeline of Revelation. Prior judgments had been severe, but the death of a third of humanity represents an unprecedented level of divine wrath. Revelation 9.18 describes how a third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. This description echoes the imagery of Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19, where similar elements were used to bring destruction upon the wicked. Killing a third of humanity is significant not only because of the sheer number, but also because it reflects the proportionality of divine judgment. This fraction seems to emphasize that, while the judgment is severe, it is not total. A large portion of humanity is destroyed, but God does not completely annihilate the human race. There is still time for those who survive to repent. This resonates with the theme throughout Revelation that even in the midst of divine punishment, there is still an opportunity for repentance and redemption. This partial destruction may also serve as a warning to those who witness it, showing the consequences of rebellion against God, but also extending a final chance for humanity to turn from wickedness. Yet, 
as Revelation 9 20, points out, even after these judgments, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. The refusal to repent despite witnessing such devastation speaks to the hardened state of humanity in the end times. One of the most striking elements associated with the release of the angels is the vast army of 200 million horsemen that accompanies them. Revelation 9.16 specifies the size of this army, a number so large it would have been nearly incomprehensible in the ancient world. While some scholars interpret this army literally, many view it as symbolic, representing either spiritual forces or the culmination of human conflict that arises during the final judgment. The 200 million strong army could symbolize the overwhelming force of chaos and destruction that follows the release of the angels. The sheer size of this army emphasizes the magnitude of the impending devastation, reflecting the idea that once divine judgment is unleashed, it will be unstoppable. Whether this army is meant to be understood as a literal military force or a symbolic representation of spiritual and earthly chaos, its presence signals the scale of the events that are about to unfold. There are also interpretations that connect this army to future geopolitical conflicts. Some have speculated that the army could represent future military alliances or global wars that will erupt as part of the end times. The specificity of the number 200 million might suggest that this force is meant to be viewed as an overwhelming power that is beyond human comprehension or control, reflecting the totality of destruction that will accompany the final days. The concept of angels leading armies is not unique to Revelation. Throughout both canonical and non-canonical apocalyptic literature, angels are frequently depicted as warriors who carry out divine judgment. In the Old Testament, we see examples of angels who act as agents of destruction in moments of judgment. In 2 Kings 19.35, for instance, a single angel is sent to destroy 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night, demonstrating the power of angelic forces when unleashed. In later Jewish apocalyptic writings, such as the War Scroll from the Dead Sea Scrolls, angelic armies play a central role in the final battle between the forces of light and darkness. These writings depict angels not only as messengers of God, but as participants in cosmic warfare, helping to bring about the ultimate defeat of evil. In Christian apocalyptic literature, this theme is further developed in works like One Enoch and the Apocalypse of Abraham, where angels lead battles against the wicked and assist in executing God's final judgment. The four angels of the Euphrates can be seen as part of this tradition of angelic warriors, acting as both commanders and participants in the battle that will determine the fate of the world. The plagues of fire, smoke and sulfur that the angels unleash upon the earth are rich with symbolic meaning. These elements frequently appear in the Bible as instruments of divine judgment, particularly in apocalyptic contexts. As previously mentioned, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as one of the most iconic examples of fire and sulfur being used to punish the wicked. Genesis 19, 24, 25. Similarly, throughout the prophetic books of the Old Testament, fire and smoke are often associated with the presence of God's judgment and the purging of sin. For example, Isaiah 66, 15, 16. In Revelation, the fire, smoke, and sulfur emanating from the mouths of the horsemen signify that these forces are not merely natural disasters, but direct acts of divine wrath. These plagues represent the totality of the judgment being poured out on the world. The destruction is both physical and spiritual, purging the earth of wickedness while also serving as a final wake-up call to those who have not yet repented. The use of these elements also connects the judgment of Revelation to earlier biblical themes of purification through destruction. Fire, in particular, is often used in the Bible as a purifying force, burning away sin and corruption to bring about renewal. In this sense, the plagues unleashed by the angels could be seen as a necessary step in the process of divine purification, paving the way for the eventual restoration of the world after the judgment has been completed. The role of the four angels in global destruction is a critical component of the apocalyptic vision in Revelation. Their release marks an escalation in the divine judgments, with their actions bringing about one of the most severe consequences in the entire book, the death of a third of humanity. Whether viewed as literal beings leading a vast army or symbolic representations of larger spiritual or geopolitical forces, 
These angels serve as instruments of divine wrath, executing God's judgment in a way that is both terrifying and awe-inspiring. Their connection to angelic warfare in apocalyptic literature further deepens our understanding of their role in the final judgment. As commanders of a massive army, they represent the overwhelming force of chaos and destruction that will be unleashed upon the world as part of God's plan for the end times. The fire, smoke, and sulfur they bring signify not only physical destruction, but also the purging of wickedness, clearing the way for the ultimate restoration of creation. The release of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River plays a pivotal role in the eschatological timeline outlined in the Book of Revelation. Their actions signal a dramatic acceleration in the sequence of events that culminate in the final judgment of humanity. Understanding their place in this prophetic vision provides valuable insight into the broader theological implications of the end times and the purpose of divine judgment. One of the key features of the prophecy surrounding the four angels is the precise timing of their release. Revelation 9.15 specifies that they are prepared for the hour, the day, the month, and the year, when they will be set free to kill a third of mankind. This exactitude underscores a recurring theme throughout Revelation. The unfolding of divine judgment is meticulously planned and orchestrated according to God's timetable. The precision of the timing highlights the sovereignty of God over the events of the end times. The angels are not released haphazardly or by chance. Their release is carefully timed to align with the larger divine narrative. This reinforces the idea that the destruction they bring is not random, but a necessary part of God's plan for the culmination of history. It reflects the biblical teaching that God has a specific plan and timeline for the end of the world, and everything happens according to His will. The reference to the specific hour, day, month, and year suggests that the release of the angels is tied to a moment in human history when the world has reached a critical threshold of rebellion and wickedness. This moment signals that God's patience has reached its limit, and the time for mercy has passed, giving way to judgment. The angel's release marks the beginning of the final phase of the end times, where divine wrath is fully unleashed on an unrepentant world. The release of the four angels occurs within the broader context of the tribulation, a period of intense suffering and judgment that precedes the final establishment of God's kingdom. In the traditional Christian understanding of eschatology, the tribulation is marked by a series of increasingly severe judgments, represented by the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls described in Revelation. The four angels appear as part of the trumpet judgments, which unleash plagues and disasters upon the earth. The angels' role in this sequence of events highlights the cumulative nature of divine judgment during the tribulation. Each judgment builds upon the previous one, increasing in intensity until the final, ultimate judgment. The angels' release is a key turning point in this process, as their actions result in the deaths of a third of humanity, an unparalleled act of destruction that underscores the severity of the tribulation. By playing such a central role in the tribulation, the four angels are not only agents of destruction, but also symbols of the inevitable consequences of humanity's rebellion against God. Their release serves as a reminder that the final judgment is not a sudden or arbitrary event, but the result of a long process in which humanity has been given countless opportunities to repent and turn to God. The tribulation, therefore, is both a time of punishment and a final call to repentance before the end. The release of the angels is directly tied to the sounding of the sixth trumpet, as described in Revelation 9. The trumpet judgments are divine pronouncements, each bringing a new wave of disasters and plagues upon the earth. The sounding of the trumpets represents the unfolding of God's wrath and with each successive trumpet, the severity of the judgments increases. The question of what specifically triggers the release of the angels can be viewed in two ways, theologically and symbolically. Theologically, the angels' release represents the moment when God, in his divine wisdom, determines that the world has reached a point where judgment is necessary. It signifies that humanity has rejected God's mercy and grace to such an extent that the time for judgment has come. Symbolically, the release of the angels could represent the breaking of spiritual or moral boundaries that have held back chaos and destruction. Throughout Revelation, there are references to divine restraints being lifted, 
allowing the forces of evil to act in ways they had previously been prevented from doing. The release of the angels could be seen as part of this larger pattern, where the barriers that have kept God's judgment at bay are finally removed, allowing the full force of his wrath to be unleashed. The release of the angels is not just about punishment, it serves a greater purpose in the unfolding of God's plan for humanity and the world. In Christian eschatology, judgment is always followed by restoration. The devastation caused by the angels is part of the necessary cleansing of the world that must take place before the final restoration of God's kingdom. The destruction wrought by the angels can be seen as a form of divine purification in which the world is purged of wickedness and rebellion. This concept of purification through judgment is a recurring theme in the Bible where God's justice is often portrayed as a refining fire that burns away sin and corruption, leaving behind what is pure and holy. In this sense, the release of the angels is a precursor to the ultimate restoration of creation. Their actions are part of the larger process by which God prepares the world for the coming of his eternal kingdom. After the angels have completed their task, the world will be ready for the final judgment and the establishment of the new heaven and new earth described in Revelation 21. Despite the terror and destruction associated with the release of the angels, the broader message of Revelation is one of hope. The judgments described in the book are not the end of the story. They are steps along the path to the ultimate victory of God and the renewal of all things. For believers, the release of the angels, though fearsome, is part of the process that leads to the final fulfillment of God's promises. This hope is most clearly expressed in Revelation's vision of the new heaven and new earth, where death, pain and suffering are no more, and God dwells with his people forever. The angel's role in the judgment is a necessary part of this transition, but it is not the final chapter. The devastation they bring is temporary, whereas the glory of God's restored kingdom is eternal. The release of the angels thus serves as both a warning and a promise. It warns of the consequences of rebellion against God, but also points to the ultimate restoration that will follow. In this way, the release of the angels encapsulates the dual themes of judgment and redemption that run throughout the book of Revelation. The release of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River is a crucial moment in the eschatological timeline of Revelation. Their actions, though destructive, serve a greater purpose in God's plan for the world. As agents of divine judgment, they execute God's will with precision and finality, signaling the end of one era and the beginning of another. Their release marks the final phase of the tribulation, bringing humanity to the brink of the ultimate judgment that will lead to the restoration of creation. While the destruction they bring is terrifying, it is also a necessary part of the process that leads to the fulfillment of God's promises. The angel's role in the tribulation is a reminder that divine judgment, though severe, is always followed by the hope of restoration and renewal. As the final events of Revelation unfold, the release of the angels brings the world one step closer to the realization of God's eternal kingdom. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates has captivated theologians, church fathers, scholars, and religious thinkers for centuries. Their role in the end times, as described in Revelation, has prompted diverse interpretations and reflections throughout history. From the early Christian church to modern theological discourse, the identity, role, and meaning of these angels have been explored through different lenses, reflecting the shifting theological and cultural perspectives of various eras. The early church fathers, such as Augustine of Hippo, Origen, and others, approached the book of Revelation with a mixture of reverence and caution. Revelation's vivid, apocalyptic imagery posed interpretative challenges, and many early Christian thinkers sought to understand its symbolism in the context of the early Christian experience under Roman rule. Augustine, in his seminal work The City of God, viewed the angels of the Euphrates not as literal beings, but as symbolic representations of larger spiritual forces. He believed that the binding and release of these angels symbolized God's control over the demonic forces that sought to destroy the church and humanity. For Augustine, the angel's release represented the loosening of chaos and sin that would occur in the lead-up to Christ's return. Similarly, Origen approached Revelation with an allegorical lens. He believed that much of the apocalyptic imagery in the text, including the release of the four angels, 
pointed to spiritual realities rather than literal events. For Origen, the angel's release was a metaphor for the spiritual warfare that rages in the unseen realms, a struggle that would culminate in God's final victory over evil. Other early Christian thinkers, however, were more inclined to see the angel's release as a literal event that would take place at the end of history. This view aligned with a more apocalyptic, millenarian interpretation in which the events of Revelation were seen as impending and literal fulfillments of divine prophecy. The angels of the Euphrates were seen as real, cosmic agents of destruction who would play a direct role in the final battle between good and evil. During the Middle Ages, the Book of Revelation continued to inspire reflection and speculation, particularly during periods of social unrest, war, and plague. The release of the four angels was often viewed through the lens of contemporary events, with many theologians and religious leaders interpreting these prophecies as warnings of God's impending judgment on a sinful world. The widespread fear of divine retribution during this period often led to an emphasis on repentance and moral reform. The release of the angels, seen as a precursor to widespread destruction, was frequently used in sermons and theological writings as a call for personal and societal repentance. The angels' destructive mission served as a reminder that the end times were approaching and that humanity must be prepared to face God's judgment. In the Renaissance, with the revival of classical learning and a renewed interest in biblical scholarship, thinkers like Martin Luther and John Calvin brought fresh perspectives to the interpretation of Revelation. Luther, for instance, viewed the angels of the Euphrates as symbols of the corrupt and oppressive powers of his time, most notably the papacy, which he saw as a force of spiritual and political corruption. Luther believed that the release of these angels represented the unleashing of divine judgment upon the corrupt institutions of the world, including the Catholic Church. Calvin, on the other hand, was more cautious in his interpretation of Revelation's apocalyptic imagery. While he acknowledged the importance of the text in understanding God's final judgment, he believed that much of Revelation was symbolic and should not be interpreted too literally. For Calvin, the release of the angels represented the unleashing of spiritual forces that would lead to the final defeat of evil and the establishment of God's kingdom. In modern times, interpretations of the four angels bound at the Euphrates have varied widely, influenced by theological developments, historical events, and changing views of eschatology. Some modern scholars continue to interpret the angels' release as a literal event that will occur during the end times, while others see it as a metaphor for broader spiritual, political, or cultural forces. Among evangelical and dispensationalist theologians, the prophecy of the four angels is often understood within the framework of premillennial eschatology. This view holds that Christ will return before the establishment of a thousand-year reign of peace, during which time the events of Revelation will unfold in a literal and sequential manner. In this interpretation, the angels' release is a future event that will occur during the tribulation, a time of great suffering and upheaval on earth. Dispensationalists, in particular, have tied the release of the angels to contemporary geopolitical events, especially in the Middle East. The Euphrates, as a historical and prophetic boundary, is often viewed as a significant location in future conflicts, with some interpreting the release of the angels as a symbol of the rise of political and military powers in that region that will play a role in the final battle of Armageddon. In Catholic and Orthodox traditions, the release of the four angels is often seen as symbolic rather than literal. These traditions emphasize the spiritual and allegorical dimensions of Revelation, focusing on the moral and theological lessons the text conveys rather than viewing it as a strict timeline of future events. The release of the angels is understood as part of a larger narrative about the cosmic struggle between good and evil, with the angels serving as instruments of divine justice. For Catholics in particular, the angel's release is often interpreted as a reminder of the consequences of sin and the importance of repentance. The Church's teachings on purgatory and final judgment emphasize the need for purification and preparation before the final resurrection, themes that resonate with the destructive yet redemptive role of the four angels in Revelation. Some modern theologians, particularly within liberal or progressive Christian traditions, approach the prophecy of the four angels through a more symbolic or metaphorical lens. These scholars may interpret the angels as representing larger systemic forces, such as war, environmental degradation, or social injustice, that have been held back, 
but will eventually be unleashed if humanity does not change its course. In this interpretation, the release of the angels serves as a warning about the consequences of human actions, particularly the ways in which humanity has failed to care for creation, uphold justice, or seek peace. The angels are seen as harbingers of the destructive consequences of unchecked sin, and their release represents the point at which these forces can no longer be restrained. Beyond theological interpretations, the four angels bound at the Euphrates have also had a profound impact on art and literature throughout history. In medieval and Renaissance art, the angels were often depicted as fearsome beings holding weapons or commanding armies of destruction. These artistic representations were meant to evoke awe and fear, reminding viewers of the impending judgment and the need for repentance. In literature, the angels have been referenced in various apocalyptic and dystopian works, symbolizing the unleashing of chaos or the breaking of moral and spiritual boundaries. Writers and poets have used the imagery of the bound angels to explore themes of judgment, destruction, and redemption, drawing on Revelation's vivid descriptions to convey a sense of cosmic struggle. The four angels bound at the Euphrates have inspired a wide range of theological interpretations and reflections over the centuries. From the early church fathers to modern theologians, the prophecy has been seen as both a literal and symbolic depiction of God's judgment and the final resolution of history. While interpretations have varied, the common theme is the inevitability of divine justice and the ultimate victory of God's kingdom. Whether viewed as literal beings, symbolic forces or metaphors for broader spiritual and political realities, the angels of the Euphrates remain a powerful and enduring image of God's control over history and the unfolding of his divine plan. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates has had a profound cultural impact beyond the confines of theological discourse. This apocalyptic imagery has resonated throughout the centuries in various forms of art, literature, music and media reflecting humanity's ongoing fascination with the mysteries of Revelation. The fearsome and awe-inspiring nature of the angels has inspired artists, writers, and filmmakers to explore themes of divine judgment, human rebellion, and the ultimate resolution of history. From medieval iconography to modern depictions in literature, the four angels have served as symbols of divine retribution and the terrifying beauty of apocalyptic prophecy. Artists throughout history have been drawn to the vivid imagery of the angels, particularly their role in unleashing destruction upon a sinful world. Their portrayal in art often reflects the anxieties of the time, particularly during periods of war, plague, or societal upheaval. Medieval and Renaissance art. In the medieval period, the four angels often appeared in illuminated manuscripts, stained glass windows, and frescoes that depicted the Book of Revelation. These angels were typically shown as celestial warriors, armed with swords or trumpets, signaling the approach of the final judgment. Their association with death and destruction was intended to remind viewers of the inevitable consequences of sin and the urgency of repentance. During the Renaissance, as artists began to explore more humanistic themes, the portrayal of the angels became more detailed and dramatic. Artists like Albrecht Dürer, in his famous Apocalypse series, depicted the angels with a combination of fearsome majesty and divine authority. Dürer's intricate engravings of the angels leading armies and overseeing the destruction of the earth capture both the terror and awe of Revelation's apocalyptic vision. In literature, the angels bound at the Euphrates have continued to inspire writers across genres, particularly in apocalyptic and dystopian fiction. The imagery of these angels being held back until the appointed time of release has been used to symbolize the unleashing of chaos and destruction after a period of restraint. Authors often invoke this prophecy when exploring themes of divine judgment, the consequences of human folly, and the breakdown of moral and social order. For example, in the 20th and 21st centuries, writers of apocalyptic science fiction and fantasy have drawn on the imagery of the four angels as symbols of uncontrolled destructive forces. Whether in the context of nuclear war, environmental collapse or global pandemics, the angel's release is often used as a metaphor for the tipping point at which humanity's actions bring about irreversible devastation. In the modern age, the four angels have found their way into popular media, especially in films and television shows dealing with apocalyptic themes. While some portrayals remain faithful to the biblical text, 
Others adapt the imagery of the angels to reflect contemporary concerns about the future of the world. The release of the angels is often used in movies and shows that explore end-of-the-world scenarios, particularly within the genre of Christian apocalyptic thrillers. Films like Left Behind, based on the popular book series by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins, incorporate elements of Revelation's prophecy, including the release of divine judgment upon the world. Though the four angels are not always depicted explicitly, their role in unleashing divine wrath is often implied through various catastrophic events. In television, shows that explore supernatural or apocalyptic themes, such as supernatural, good omens, and the omen, frequently reference or allude to the angels of the Euphrates as part of a broader exploration of divine judgment and cosmic warfare. These depictions often blend biblical prophecy with modern concerns about morality, power, and the potential for global destruction. The imagery of the four angels has also made its way into music and video games, particularly in genres that focus on themes of apocalypse and divine justice. In metal and rock music, the apocalyptic imagery of Revelation is a frequent source of inspiration, and songs about the end times often invoke the angels as symbols of impending doom. In video games, the release of the angels has been used as a plot point in games that explore post-apocalyptic or dystopian settings. Games like Darksiders and Bayonetta incorporate angelic and demonic figures in a storyline that mirrors the cosmic battle between good and evil found in Revelation. In these games, the angels of the Euphrates are sometimes portrayed as powerful adversaries or agents of destruction, highlighting their role in the final battle between divine and earthly forces. The imagery of the four angels bound at the Euphrates, like much of the Book of Revelation, has had a lasting impact on public perception of apocalyptic prophecies. Throughout history, whenever humanity has faced global crises, whether through war, natural disaster, or political upheaval, there has been a tendency to turn to the Book of Revelation as a framework for understanding the chaos and uncertainty. During periods of crisis, such as the Black Death in the 14th century or the devastation of the two world wars, Revelation's apocalyptic imagery often resurfaced in public discourse. The four angels, with their destructive mission, became symbols of the uncontrollable forces that seemed to be overtaking the world. Many people, fearing that the end was near, interpreted these crises as signs of the impending release of the angels and the beginning of divine judgment. Even in modern times, apocalyptic rhetoric surfaces during global events such as pandemics, natural disasters, and geopolitical tensions. The angels bound at the Euphrates are invoked as metaphors for forces of destruction that are being held back, but will eventually be unleashed if humanity does not change course. This has led to a renewed interest in apocalyptic prophecies among both religious and secular audiences, with many wondering whether the challenges facing the world today are signs of the end times. The fascination with the end of the world is a recurring theme in human culture, and the prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates feeds into this broader narrative. Whether through religious beliefs or secular interpretations, the idea that there are forces beyond human control that will one day be released resonates with the fear and uncertainty that people often feel when facing the unknown. This cultural fascination has led to a proliferation of apocalyptic storytelling across media, with the four angels serving as potent symbols of the fine line between order and chaos. Whether depicted as literal beings, metaphors for political or environmental collapse, or symbols of divine judgment, the angels remind us of the fragility of the world and the potential for sudden and catastrophic change. The cultural impact of the four angels bound at the Euphrates extends far beyond the realm of theological discourse. Throughout history, these angels have served as powerful symbols of divine judgment, chaos, and the breakdown of moral and spiritual order. Their portrayal in art, literature, film, and music reflects humanity's enduring fascination with the mysteries of Revelation and the question of what lies at the end of history. From medieval churches to modern apocalyptic fiction, the imagery of the four angels has been used to explore themes of fear, hope, and the consequences of human actions. As our world continues to grapple with crises, the prophecy of the four angels remains a potent reminder of the tension between restraint and destruction and the ultimate fulfillment of the divine plan. While the prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates is a prominent feature of the Christian book of Revelation, the themes of divine judgment, celestial beings, 
and eschatological events are not limited to Christianity. Various religious traditions, particularly those with apocalyptic elements, contain similar narratives about divine beings bound or restrained until the time for judgment arrives. These parallels across different religions point to a shared human fascination with the end of the world and the role of divine forces in bringing about cosmic transformation. Jewish apocalyptic literature, particularly from the Second Temple period, features many parallels to the Christian concept of angels as agents of divine judgment. The most notable source is the Book of Enoch, which describes a group of rebellious angels known as the Watchers. According to this text, the Watchers descended to earth, took human wives, and taught humanity forbidden knowledge. As punishment for their disobedience, these angels were bound and imprisoned, awaiting the final judgment. The Book of Enoch, though not part of the canonical Jewish scriptures, was highly influential in shaping early Jewish and Christian eschatology. The idea of celestial beings being restrained until the time of judgment resonates with the imagery of the four angels in Revelation. In both cases, angels are held back by divine command. Their release delayed until the appointed time when they will carry out God's judgment on the earth. The theme of angelic beings participating in the final battle between good and evil is also present in other Jewish apocalyptic texts, such as the War Scroll from the Dead Sea Scrolls, this document describes a cosmic war between the forces of light and darkness, with angels taking an active role in the conflict. The parallels between these Jewish texts and the prophecy of the four angels in Revelation suggest a shared apocalyptic framework, where celestial beings are both restrained and ultimately unleashed as part of the divine plan. In Islamic eschatology, angels also play a significant role in the events of the end times, particularly in the judgment of humanity. The Quran and Hadith contain descriptions of angels who act as guardians, recorders of human deeds, and executors of divine will. Similar to the imagery in Revelation, Islamic teachings include references to angels who oversee the punishment of the wicked and the protection of the righteous. One of the most notable eschatological figures in Islam is the angel Israfil, who is said to blow the trumpet that signals the day of judgment. This act triggers the resurrection of the dead and the commencement of divine judgment. The sounding of the trumpet by Israfil parallels the trumpet judgments in Revelation, where each trumpet signals a new stage in the unfolding of divine wrath. While the Quran does not specifically describe angels bound at the Euphrates or a similar geographic location, the concept of angels being reserved for specific tasks during the end times is present. Islamic eschatology emphasizes the role of angels in the final reckoning, and like in Christianity, these angels act under God's command, participating in the ultimate victory of good over evil. While Eastern religious traditions such as Hinduism and Buddhism do not have the same concept of angels bound or released for judgment, they do contain parallels in their eschatological and cosmological views. In Hinduism, the cycle of creation, preservation and destruction is central to the understanding of the universe's lifespan. At the end of each cosmic cycle, the god Shiva is said to perform the dance of destruction, known as the Tandava, which leads to the dissolution of the universe and the eventual renewal of creation. In this cycle, the destruction brought by Shiva serves a similar function to the judgment of the angels in Revelation. Both represent the necessary destruction that precedes the renewal of the world. Though Hinduism does not feature angels in the same sense as Abrahamic religions, its understanding of divine forces bringing about the end of one age and the beginning of another resonates with the apocalyptic imagery found in Revelation. Buddhism also contains eschatological elements, particularly in the form of prophecies about the coming of Maitreya, the future Buddha. Maitreya is prophesied to appear during a time of moral decline and suffering when the teachings of the current Buddha, Gautama, have been forgotten. While this is not an apocalyptic event in the same sense as the Christian or Islamic end times, it still involves a transformation of the world, where the arrival of a divine figure brings about moral and spiritual renewal. The concept of a significant river as a boundary between different realms or phases of existence appears in many religious traditions. In Greek mythology, the river Styx serves as the boundary between the world of the living and the realm of the dead. 
Souls must cross the Styx to enter the underworld where they face judgment from the gods. Similarly, in ancient Mesopotamian mythology, the rivers Tigris and Euphrates were considered sacred, marking the boundary between the land of the living and the divine realm. The Euphrates in particular was seen as a conduit between the mortal and divine, a place where human history intersected with the plans of the gods. This idea of a river serving as a spiritual boundary may have influenced the use of the Euphrates in Revelation, where the river becomes a symbolic and literal marker of divine judgment. In both Abrahamic and non-Abrahamic traditions, the concept of rivers or boundaries that separate different phases of existence or spiritual realms is a recurring theme. These boundaries are often seen as places where divine forces intervene in human affairs, bringing about judgment, transformation, or renewal. The Euphrates in Revelation functions in a similar way, representing the point where the final phase of divine judgment begins, leading to the ultimate resolution of history. Despite the differences in religious beliefs and cosmologies, there are common themes that run through many apocalyptic traditions. These include the idea of divine beings acting as agents of judgment, the notion of a cosmic battle between good and evil, and the belief in the eventual restoration of the world after a period of destruction. In Jewish, Christian, and Islamic eschatology, angels play a key role in executing divine will during the end times. Whether as messengers, warriors, or agents of destruction, these celestial beings are portrayed as integral to the fulfillment of God's plan. In Hinduism and Buddhism, though angels do not feature prominently, the concept of divine beings or cosmic forces bringing about the end of an era and the start of a new one echoes the themes found in Abrahamic apocalyptic traditions. The idea of restraint, whether in the form of bound angels, contained forces, or divine beings waiting for the right moment, is also a recurring theme across these traditions. In Christianity, the angels at the Euphrates are held back until the appointed time, when their release marks a turning point in the cosmic battle. In Hinduism, Shiva's dance of destruction is also reserved for the end of a cosmic cycle, indicating that even forces of destruction are under divine control. The parallels between the prophecy of the four angels and similar concepts in other religious traditions speak to a universal fascination with the idea of the end of days. Across cultures and belief systems, humanity has long grappled with questions about the ultimate fate of the world, the role of divine beings in that fate, and the moral and spiritual consequences of human actions. These shared themes suggest that the prophecy of the four angels resonates not only within Christianity, but also across religious boundaries. Whether seen as literal beings, symbolic forces, or metaphors for the larger cycles of creation and destruction, the angels represent the human desire to understand the end of history and the forces that will bring it about. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates finds parallels in various religious traditions, reflecting shared themes of divine judgment, restraint, and the cosmic battle between good and evil. From Jewish apocalyptic texts to Islamic eschatology, and from the cycles of creation in Hinduism to the arrival of Maitreya in Buddhism, humanity's fascination with the end times transcends individual religious boundaries. By exploring these parallels, we can see how the imagery of the angels, though rooted in Christian theology, resonates with broader human concerns about the ultimate fate of the world. Whether viewed through the lens of divine judgment, cosmic cycles, or moral transformation, the prophecy of the four angels reflects a universal preoccupation with the forces that will shape the end of history and the renewal that may follow. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River brings into focus one of the most profound theological questions, the relationship between divine justice and mercy. Throughout the book of Revelation, these angels symbolize God's judgment, but their restraint until a specific time also reflects a broader theme of divine patience and mercy. The tension between judgment and mercy, destruction and renewal, and wrath and redemption permeates the apocalyptic narrative, offering believers a complex view of God's ultimate plan for humanity. One of the most striking aspects of the prophecy is that the angels are bound, restrained from enacting their destructive mission until the appointed time. This restraint is a powerful symbol of God's sovereignty. Although these angels are capable of great destruction, they are held back by divine command, reflecting the idea that even the forces of chaos and judgment are under God's control. In many ways, 
This restraint reflects the broader biblical theme of God's patience. Throughout the scriptures, God is described as slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Exodus 34, 6. He withholds judgment, allowing humanity time to repent and turn from wickedness. The binding of the angels mirrors this divine forbearance, suggesting that God holds back his full wrath until it is absolutely necessary. The angels are not released arbitrarily, but only when the world has reached a point of no return, where judgment is the only option left. The restraint of the angels also highlights the balance between divine justice and mercy. While the angels are bound, there is still hope for repentance. Humanity is given time to recognize its errors, turn back to God, and avoid the catastrophic consequences of rebellion. The delay in the angels' release is a form of divine mercy, providing a window of opportunity for salvation. When the angels are finally released, their mission is one of destruction, killing a third of humanity and unleashing chaos upon the world. This raises an important theological question. Why is such severe judgment necessary? What purpose does it serve in the broader narrative of God's plan? In biblical theology, judgment is often portrayed not merely as punishment, but as a necessary step toward purification and renewal. The destruction brought by the four angels is not an end in itself, but part of a larger process that leads to the ultimate restoration of creation. In this sense, judgment is both an act of justice and a prelude to redemption. Throughout Revelation, the plagues, disasters, and judgments serve to purify the world, removing sin and evil to prepare for the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. The angels, as agents of divine judgment, play a crucial role in this process. Their destructive actions are part of the divine plan to cleanse the earth of wickedness and make way for the new heaven and new earth described in Revelation 21. This view of judgment as purification is echoed in other parts of Scripture. In the Old Testament, fire is often used as a symbol of purification, burning away impurities to reveal what is pure and righteous. Similarly, the plagues unleashed by the angels can be seen as a necessary purging of evil, clearing the way for the final redemption of humanity. Even as the angels carry out their devastating mission, there is a sense that divine mercy remains at work. The fact that only a third of humanity is killed, rather than all of humanity, indicates that God's judgment is measured. The destruction, while severe, is not total. There is still time for those who survive to repent, to turn from their wicked ways and seek God's mercy. Revelation 9.20 21 states that after the plagues are unleashed, the rest of mankind, who were not killed by these plagues, still did not repent of the work of their hands. This refusal to repent, even in the face of such overwhelming judgment, reveals the depth of human rebellion. But it also highlights God's continued mercy, as the survivors are still given the chance to turn back to Him. The interplay between judgment and mercy is a recurring theme in the Bible. In the story of Noah's Ark, God floods the earth to cleanse it of wickedness, but he spares Noah and his family, giving humanity a fresh start. In the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroys the cities but spares Lot and his family. In both cases, God's judgment is tempered by his mercy, and the same dynamic is at play in the prophecy of the four angels. The release of the four angels and the devastation they bring also raises important questions about human responsibility. Throughout Revelation, there is a sense that divine judgment is not arbitrary, but a direct consequence of humanity's actions. The plagues, wars, and disasters unleashed by the angels are responses to human rebellion and sin. In this way, the judgment carried out by the angels can be seen as a reflection of the moral choices humanity has made. The fact that the angels are held back until a specific time suggests that there are limits to God's patience. While he is merciful and slow to anger, there comes a point when judgment must be enacted. The release of the angels symbolizes that moment when humanity's sin has reached its full measure and God's judgment can no longer be delayed. This emphasis on human responsibility is a central theme in Christian theology. While God offers mercy and the opportunity for repentance, humanity must choose whether to accept that offer. The release of the angels serves as a reminder that choices have consequences and that there is a limit to how long God will hold back his judgment. While the prophecy of the four angels is one of destruction and judgment, it is not without hope. 
In the broader context of Revelation, the release of the angels is part of a sequence of events that leads to the ultimate victory of God and the establishment of His eternal kingdom. After the judgments have been carried out, the forces of evil are defeated, and God creates a new heaven and a new earth, where death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. Revelation 21, 4. The hope of redemption lies at the heart of the Christian understanding of divine judgment. While the angel's release brings death and destruction, it also paves the way for the restoration of creation. Judgment is not the final word. Redemption is. This hope of renewal, even in the midst of destruction, offers believers a sense of comfort and assurance that God's justice is ultimately redemptive. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates contains important lessons for humanity, particularly regarding the relationship between divine justice and mercy. It serves as a reminder that while God is patient and merciful, His judgment is real and there are consequences for rejecting His grace. The restraint of the angels symbolizes God's forbearance, while their release signifies the moment when that forbearance reaches its limit. At the same time, the prophecy offers hope. Even in the midst of judgment, there is the possibility of redemption. The angel's release is not the end of the story, but a necessary step in the process of purification and renewal. For believers, this prophecy serves as both a warning and a promise, a warning of the consequences of rebellion and a promise of the ultimate restoration of all things under God's reign. The prophecy of the four angels bound at the Euphrates offers a profound reflection on the mystery of divine justice and mercy. The angels, though agents of destruction, are held back by God's command, a symbol of his patience and willingness to give humanity the opportunity to repent. When they are finally released, their mission of judgment is part of a larger process that leads to the purification and restoration of the world. In this prophecy, believers are reminded of the balance between God's justice and His mercy, His wrath, and His redemption. The release of the angels serves as a warning of the consequences of sin, but it also points to the hope of renewal that lies beyond judgment. In the end, God's justice is always tempered by His mercy, and His ultimate plan is one of restoration and renewal for all creation. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a huge favor and hit the like button and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time here, I'd like to personally invite you to join our growing community by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to tap the bell so that you never miss a video. Subscribing to our channel is completely free and gives you access to videos just like this as soon as they are released. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next